Good evening and welcome to uh, this meeting of the Utilities Committee. It's uh, 5.30, we're on Tuesday, October 1st. To my right is Mr. William Lutz and to my left is Mr. Uh, Bill Twiss. And my name is John Twilliger, I'm the Chairman of the Committee. Today we have two items before us. The first one is going to be Mr. Funderburg. Right. Thank you. As you're fully aware, the City of Troy has participated in an electric aggregation program since 2014 uh, on behalf of uh, its citizens and small commercial businesses. And over that time period, it has saved uh, a total of $4.6 million approximately over market averages. So the time has come that we see a window of opportunity to take that out to bid. We are in year two of, a, of our second uh, three-year agreement. And it came to our attention it was probably a good time to act and go out to bid and figure out and find out what kind of rates would be available on the open market. Uh, we entered into an agreement with Schneider Electric again to help us with that. They have come back to us here in the last couple of weeks and have uh, come, up, come up with a potential 36 month new agreement rate of 0 0.0438 uh, cents per kilowatt hour. And that is actually a reduction over our current agreement, which is uh, at 0 0.0548 per kilowatt hour. The market trends have been coming down, uh, so it was a good time to go out. And they are uh, recommending that we would <clears throat> look into signing another three-year, 36-month agreement with First Energy Solutions, and that is who our current agreement is with. Uh, so that is the recommendation in front of you tonight. The savings uh, may not be quite as much as in previous years, only because the market rates have been coming down all, all across the board. But that is the recommendation in front of you uh, this evening. Question. Can you remind me how a commercial business or citizen will know if they're able to opt into that? Is it? It, it is it's an, something mailed to their address? Or, yes, Because not it, all citizens can get. It is an opt-out program. And this is where Schneider Electric, in partnership with uh, the utility provider First Energy, they actually get uh, periodic updates on all of our res residents and businesses who would be eligible. Okay. And uh, they're able to get that through utilities uh, information. And they periodically, it's in their best interest to send out as much information as possible because the more business they can get. This is three years at 0 0.038 something? 0 0.0438. And it actually will, will not take effect until April of 2020. We're that much far ahead of the, agree of the uh, expiration of this current agreement. It stays three, three years at that amount? Or it would, that? yes. Okay. Questions from anyone else? Yes, sir, if I may. You bet. So this is an opt-out. So everyone is automatically enrolled, and, and it is an opt-out only. Is that correct? They are notified of their opportunity to opt-out. Otherwise, they are on the program. Correct. Right. And you said that there was $4.6 has been uh, saved by our uh, residents, the customers from the DPNL are using the DPNL service, is that correct? Since April of 2014. <clears throat> and uh, this is not available through Pioneer or any other uh, utility through the city, particularly because Pioneer is a cooperative and Co not a public utility, is that correct? Correct. Okay. That's all, all I have at this time, Mr. Chair, thank you. Anyone else? What would you like to do? Oops, I'm sorry, I didn't see you over there. That's okay. Mrs. Oda? Um, so First Energy has been in the news a lot lately with bankruptcy, and how, how does all of this play into that? The First Energy, the contract that they signed would be honored. Um, again, obviously, if it would be taken over uh, from some means, then we would still have a contract in writing with them and would have to be honored throughout the time period. 
if unless we're so far, uh, unless we're notified otherwise. But the uh, current contract we're in, you know, that's been a concern, and they've let us know that they intend to honor our, the current rate through April, and continue to do so. I think they're part of the. Is there an energy bailout going on? There's a lot of advertisements on television, <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I don't think I want to go there tonight. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to make sure that their bankruptcy proceedings are not going to, I just wondered how that affected us. Again, they were one of four bidders, the lowest bidder again, and I think they, uh, they intend to honor the agreement. Okay. If I might speculate, Mr. Chair. Sure. I'm sure that some of this bankruptcy issues are for protection only. Uh, so there's other legal avenues that are probably being explored behind the scenes. But because this is dealing with a public utility, I'm sure that there are many um, guarantees that will carry over to our customers and our residents. And, and they've actually uh, been in the news for a number of months, if not years now, mm -hmm. and uh, have continued to operate. Uh, I think what we have to keep in mind is there are several different types of bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the, the most extreme mm -hmm. one is, you know, you're just done. I'm not sure which one they have filed, uh, but it, I know it involves restructuring and not complete ceasing of operations. And it's confusing for residents because I mean, I get phone calls from people who've gotten a letter from First Energy, and they're like, "Now what do I do?" Yeah, so, yeah. And we've gotten those calls as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. What would you like to do with move, the recommendation? Move forward to council. Move forward. I concur. Move forward. So that is the decision of the committee. Next, we have uh, Mr. Titterington on our water plan. Sure. Uh, so in the uh, 2019 budget, uh, we included uh, $180,000 to uh, replace uh, the Lime Slaker number two at the uh, water treatment plant. Um, we are asking for authorization uh, in an amount not to exceed $200,000 between the time, uh, uh, I guess the 10 months, the nine months since uh, the budget was passed, um, there has been uh, inflationary increases to the equipment. Manufacturer has uh, been telling us that uh, the uh, current estimate is closer to $200,000 than the $180,000 number. And so we are recommending uh, that uh, you authorize up to the $200,000 amount uh, in the hopes that as we bid this, it'll come in significantly lower than that. Um, we, uh, within the uh, water fund, uh, have the available balances uh, to, uh, to accommodate the additional $20,000 estimate. And we are not recommending or requesting emergency legislation. In-depth questions? I don't have in-depth, but I think I remember the last line, the slacker we discussed. We have gotten quite a bit over, I mean, since 1989, we've gotten more use out of ours than most. So I think it's a good thing where we... Oh, yeah, our equipment yeah. has lasted for, last for decades. Uh, yeah, it is I think essential. last time it's like it was around 20, 20 And it's an essential part of our, uh, our softening, water softening process, so... So I think it's good, yes. No questions. Thank you. I, I have no questions. Yeah. So really this is, we've paid 180000 towards it, but they want 200000 So we're just discussing. We, estimated. we estimated 180000 It's actually, estimated. we're thinking closer to 200000 We have not paid anything. We've still got to go out to bid. So yep. this is part of your authorization is authorizing us to go to bid. Non-emergency. Correct. Okay. Oops, questions from persons. Bobby, Bobby's got one, I can tell. Uh, in deference to Mr. Lutz's predicament, I'm just not going oh, to ask you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Seeing I mean, none? Move forward. Move okay. forward. Let's move forward. And move forward. So, 
we do move forward with that. Is there anything else to come before? No, sir. Thank you for attending.